Hello, everyone. I'm your host, Jacob Robertson, and welcome back. Today, we had an exciting guest, John Neal. John is leading the expansion efforts for Southern Bank here in the Richmond market. He covers that and provides some great insights and commentary. All that and more, so let's dive in. Transact Capital presents Banking on Your Business with Jacob Robertson. Awesome. Well, John, we really appreciate you uh, joining us here today. And so we're going to start this conversation like we start all of our conversations, give you a chance to introduce yourself and really connect with the listeners. So mm -hmm. take a few minutes, tell us who you are, and then we'll dive in. Okay. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is John Neal. Um, I am the uh, Richmond Market Executive for Southern Bank here, uh, here in town, recently opened our office in March. Um, new to market, uh, Southern Bank is a... Um, is an Eastern North Carolina-based bank. Mount Olive is uh, the headquarters. Uh, founded in 1901 and its first entrance into Richmond. Um, again, Eastern North Carolina, sort of uh, hometown. Moved up the coast with an acquisition of Heritage Bank in uh, the eastern part of Virginia and um, has worked its way west uh, into Newport News and now into Richmond. So I'm born and raised Richmond. I grew up here. Uh, went to collegiate school, Hampton Sydney College, and came back and um, started my career at SunTrust in their management training program. Uh, spent some time in private wealth, capital markets at BB&T, and um, went back to SunTrust and wealth and worked in the medical space. Um, and then most recently was at South State Bank as a private banker. Was there for about five years before this opportunity at Southern came about. So um, it's exciting. Yeah. yeah it's, so uh, the opportunity, I man, that's big, you know, a, a kind of a, a new bank to the market. Uh, you know, so as you think about that, as you, you, you explore the Richmond market, what mm -hmm. types of industries do you guys specialize in? So we do um, we do a lot of healthcare, uh, medical practices, dental practices, veterinary practices, um, do a lot with professional practices in general, law firms, um, CPA firms, architecture firms, uh, but also a good bit of CNI business. Um, traditional CNI, owner-occupied real estate. We do some investment real estate um, and, you know, income-producing property. Uh, that's been more of a, a, a more recent sort of development for our bank um, as we've grown and uh, recognizing some areas of the market that we can, that we can um, leverage our expertise in. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good little community bank. We're about $5 billion in assets. So, you know, we can... Uh, we can serve a lot, a lot of different types of customers uh, here in Richmond okay. um, with a more community-based, community bank-based feel, uh, cut, you know, driven by service. And, you know, we know that, you know, in this market, this day and age, service is going to set you apart. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a great bank. They're excited about Richmond. They're excited about the opportunity and the potential to build a business here. And I'm excited to lead it. Awesome. Yeah. So, you know, building on that, as you look, think about you know, what types of loans? Uh, yeah, it's, it's an interesting time right now in, in, in the market. You know, what types of loans do you really see as, as a strength for Southern Bank to, to go out and, and target? Well, it is it is an interesting market. Um, there have been, there's been a lot of change in sort of the, the banking landscape um, in general. But here in Richmond, where you could argue there are a lot of banks, you could argue it's over an overbank city. Um, but, you know, I think that for a bank like ours that wants to maintain that community banking type of feel um, where it's relationship based, um, you know, we can really kind of run the gamut as far as, you know, who we want to do business with and where, where we want to play. Um, you know, I would say those professional practice loans that I've that I mentioned earlier, be it a buy in, a buy out, a, um, a piece of property, if it's a if it's a you know, a, a medical practice that wants to build a building or buy a building or has a shareholder that needs to sell and they need to sell to, um, or, or if a younger shareholders or a younger associates trying to buy in as a principal, you know, we can help with that. Any sort of owner occupied type of property or opportunity, um, you know, we specialize there. We're also a low cost provider. Um, we're a privately held bank. So we're, we aren't public. We don't have earnings calls. We don't have shareholder reports or analyst calls or anything. Um, we can kind of do, sort of do what we want. And 
uh, play where we want to play. And okay. We're, we're going to have places where we, we shy away from because of different market dynamics, and we're going to gravitate towards other places where we feel like is appropriate for where we are um, and where we can best serve our clients. So, yeah, you know, great. think think owner-occupied real estate. Think, um, you know, practice acquisition, uh, practice buy-in. Um, and then, uh, you know, investment real estate, I would say we're, we're still playing in that space, um, you know, just probably not as much um, and selectively. Oh, yeah. It, interesting. So, yeah, a lot to digest there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so, you know, growing on that, that uh, the investment real estate aspect, what uh, so you are you targeting specific asset classes? I assume there's asset classes you're not targeting. Uh, yeah, just a little bit of, uh, more about that. Sure. Uh, so on the investment real estate side, I would say that. Uh, multifamily continues to to um, uh, to be of interest. Um, you know, anything kind of practice, professional practice related is of interest. Um, we're steering clear of office right now, and mm -hmm. you know, I think a, 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 you know others would stay the same. Just kind of um, trying to understand how this is going to play out over the next couple of years. Right. Um, right. And you know, I think uh, industrial still looks to be a good place to be. Um, you know, but, um, you know, I would, I would say, uh, you know, multifamily is where we're, where we're kind of sticking, uh, right now and, um, some industrial. Great. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, so one quick question, you know, do you all, do you have a swap desk? Do you offer swaps for loans? We do not have a swap desk. Okay. Um, okay. so everything, everything is balance sheet, you know, fixed rates or balance sheet fixed rates. Um, you know, we, we do, we obviously will will price things on a variable base basis, you know, using an index. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, we do not have a swap desk. Okay, yeah. So, so that's a good question that you know to kind of build on that is, and you kind of mentioned this: the difference between fixed and floating. And you know, given the current market conditions, the current rate environment, and the current outlook for rates, you know, what are you recommending to clients as far as you know their option? Is it better to fix? Is it better to float? Uh, how, how you how do you really position them? Well, the best thing that you can do is is have a conversation with your client or prospect and get a feel for what their goals are and then what their risk tolerance tolerance is. Um, you know, you, you can sit down with anybody and, and anyone that, you know, you're going to meet with or talk to about a credit need is going to have an opinion on where where interest rates go or where they're going. Yeah. Um, you know, does it make sense to fix today if, you know, you think rates are going to uh, you know, top out in the next two or three months. Um, I don't know. I mean, you may be better off using an index and, and a spread. Um, but if you feel like rates are going to continue to rise, um, you know, locking in a fixed rate, you know, uh, today um, may be the best option. And part of it is sort of, you know, what is what does the purchase look like? Is it going to be a long term holding? Is it going to be something that you know, something more short, short term, if you're looking at real estate. Um, but you know, there's always going to be some, um, there's always going to be a little bit of added comfort with a fixed rate. Um, <clears throat> and for a larger transaction, we're not looking at swaps. So if you're, if you're someone that, you know, if, or if you're a bank that's going to require a swap, uh, because of a size of a deal or, or whatever, um, you know, you might be talking to somebody who's had a, a bad experience with with using something like a swap in the past and may not want to do it. So um, I think we have an advantage on, you know, some of those some of those banks that may, you know, feel like they need to need to do a swap for a particular transaction uh, because we are a low cost provider and can, and can provide lower fixed rates than a lot of our uh, competition. OK, yeah. So, you know, you're you're new to the market. You want to grow, right? And mm -hmm. so that's you know an interesting time. As you think about growth, you know, do you still see the bank being more selective these days? I would say yes. Um, and in our legacy markets, we are you know definitely more selective. So we're we're extending credit to folks that have uh, relationships that we have strong relationships with. Right. Um, in Richmond, we don't have a whole lot of relationships yet. We don't have fully banked clients yet. So it's a little bit of a different setup for us. We're technically an LPO, a loan production office. Okay. So we okay. can't formally require a deposit relationship to extend credit. Um, and that's, you know, a lot of a lot of our competition out there is talking about 
well, you, you know, for us to do this, we need you to bring over X number of dollars in deposits. We're not going to do that. Okay. Um, we would love the opportunity to bank these folks on a deposit basis or on a full relationship basis, but we know it's going to take some time. And we know that um, for us to build a presence and build a business here in Richmond that, um, you know, we need to, we need to make loans. Great. Yes. Yeah. So as we talk to the, the audience, the CEOs, the CFOs, the business owners out there, you know, we want to give them some advice from your point of view. And really, how can they best position themselves if they want to go to Southern Bank to compete and, and you know, become one of your clients, win one of these loans? Yeah, I, w- I would say, um, you know, it, it, to understand who we are and, and know that we're going to be there and be responsive um, and you know, want to want to uh, we want to be advisors. We want to we want to sit on the same side of the table. We want to understand what it means to you know what your needs are, but also where you want to take your business. Um, or if you're trying to you know buy a piece of real estate as a part of a diversification strategy. If you're trying to build a portfolio, uh, understand what that what that is. And again, we know that it's it's going to be for us to make a difference. It has to be on service. So. Um, you know, someone that, that I want to work with is someone that they can feel like they can pick up the phone and call me anytime, uh, bounce questions off me. Um, and you know, ultimately we'll, it'll be in a, a, we will be in a better position to serve them. Um, you know, the, the better and more we get to know each other. Great. Okay. So as they're, you know, preparing to, to interact with you, are there certain things, you know, that you would recommend, I know people talk about bringing audited financials these days, or maybe they want to you know, be prepared and ready to have a strong personal guarantee. Is there anything that they need to consider or, or not consider when, when thinking about Southern Bank? So I would say that, um, yeah, I mean, right right now, as we look at sort of where we're, where we're looking to play, um, yeah, so it, it always helps to have a strong guarantee, a strong personal guarantee. You know, does it mean that we will, we will, we will do uh, or not do a transaction because there's not a, a personal guarantee of any type or a strong guarantee. No, um, you know it's kind of case by case. Um, but yeah, I, I would say you know I want my clients to be transparent in the same way I'll be transparent with them, and um, and that you know it's you know someone that has their books together, has their financials together, someone that can provide that up front is going to get. Um, you know, a, a, you know, very clear cut, uh, a, a fast, faster turn on a response than say, you know, someone that either, you know, isn't going to give you the whole picture or won't give you what, what they need. Right. Yes. Yeah. So, so lastly, as we you know, think about, you know, th- those prospects out there, um, you know, as they are considering you, what, what does it really mean to be a client of yours? Well, again, I think it's, it's a trust between client and banker, um, a trust that, you know, where I can be an advisor to my client. And really that's about, you know, putting the relationship first, understanding their needs, understanding where they want to take their business or their portfolio, if it's investment property. Um, you know, it's a, again, like you said, it's an interesting time. Um, we're, we are in a market right now where banks are being extremely selective, um, credit opportunities that that you may have had four or five banks compete for a year ago or 18 months ago, um, it's just not happening today. So um, <clears throat> there's been a shift, uh, a dramatic shift to the deposit side and deposit gathering for a lot of our competition. And we're, no, we're not immune to that. I mean, we've seen some of the same pressures. Um, you know, however, uh, we feel that we're in a great position to navigate this environment and, um, and, continue to provide that community banks, you know, feel and service to clients that, that need it. Great. Yeah, that's awesome to hear. And, you know, lastly, just to wrap it up, how can people best reach you? Uh, phone, email, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, again, very responsive. Um, you know, it's, I've got my cell phone number is my only, only phone number right now. Right. Um, and I do have my email, which is, uh, and, and te- you know, text, I'm usually responsive on text for those that have my cell number, but, okay. um, okay. yeah, easy. You know, we're going to be doing some marketing here in the next couple of uh, months using BizSense and, um, and, you know, uh, jumping in on some sponsorships of, of events and we're looking forward to it. 
Great. Yeah. So, so yeah, to everyone out there, you know, keep an eye out for John. Uh, and John, thank you for joining us. You know, that kind of wraps it up for, for today. So thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Thank you. Transact Capital presents Banking on Your Business with Jacob Robertson. 